Hello and welcome to the Texas Special YouTube channel and for this month's edition of Moe's Hobby Shop we're going to take a look at this gorgeous Broadway Limited 482 Mountain decorated in Union Pacific's passenger two-tone gray paint scheme. Now Union Pacific did have heavy mountains which this is a heavy mountain type locomotive and they were used in dual service so you could see these guys pulling express trains just as easily as you could see them pulling freight trains this one like I said happens to be decorated in Union Pacific's two-tone gray passenger scheme now I'm breaking my rule about BLI because this one hasn't given me any trouble and shockingly it uh, is rather adept on this uh, rather adept rather sure-footed on this 18 inch radius curved track yes I said that right this beast will run with no problem whatsoever that I have found on 18 inch radius track not only that it handles my Bachman easy track switches with relative ease now I'm not sure if that's a statement on the locomotive itself or the freaking hours of labor I have put into filing down those points and stock rails so that everything is about as silky smooth as you can get but either way who cares this thing comes with um, Broadway Limited's Paragon sound system. It is DCC equipped. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, this beauty has one other trick up its sleeve. Yes, sir. That's right. That smoke fluid I put down the stack right there, just like that. <clears throat> so, the locomotive and the tender are held together with a metal draw bar a thin sheet metal draw bar and there's one pinhole in it not like Bachman steam locomotives where there's two or more there's one pinhole and there's a solid pin right here that slides down into that hole to keep these two together there is a wire plug in between the tender and there's a wire plug that comes off the tender and plugs into the rear of the locomotive just behind the cab or just below the cab floor rather I'm not pulling that apart to show y'all and I do have the box this came in I'm not putting it back in the box just to take it out of the box number one it's rather tightly packed in there and I don't want to risk damaging any details on this engine because it's not mine I ain't gonna go there secondly uh, it is a pain in the neck to get that dadgum plug plugged in and then unplugged just to plug it right back in after I pull it out of the box and unnecessarily risk damaging details so we're just not going to go there the tender has electrical pickup to aid with electrical pickup and there is electrical pickup across all wheels of the locomotive itself the paint and lettering on this thing is about as immaculate as you'd expect from a BLI locomotive and you have oodles and oodles and oodles of separately applied freestanding details the hand railings for instance these number boards the bell the whistle the pop-off valves the steam turbo generator you've got this piping here you've got this pipe this is actually cast onto the boiler as are these little steps here this step this step and this little access hatch here is cast onto the boiler there's a fair amount of rivet detailing on this right here where the smoke jacket uh, meets the smoke box sorry if I screwed that up I'm a modern diesel guy this valve gear is immaculate you've got the two air compressors you have this piping down here you've got all this piping down here everything is from what I can tell correct I'll zoom in 
try to so you can see a little better. Alright, I believe that's about as good as it's going to get. Just look at that detail. That is some great A detail. Definitely worth the uh, probably $300 or so that my, my buddy spent on this engine. And they even have cab figures, crew figures in the cab. We're looking at the fireman here. This is the fireman side of the locomotive. You can see there's a coal load in the coal bunker. You've got all this separately applied freestanding uh, grab irons here. You've got this separately applied ladder here. The stirrup steps are cast on to the tender body. And you have this separately applied ladder right here gaining access to the cab for the crew. As well as separately applied and freestanding grab irons or hand railings right here on the tender and right here on the locomotive. I know they're hard to see which is why I'm trying to point them out. The trucks on the tender are from what I can tell correct. You've got this separately applied little toolbox back here. You've got the brake pipe detailing. You've got this hook right these hooks right here where they would have had the polling uh, pole and that's not political polling, that's actual polling where they would push a freight car on an adjacent track with the locomotive. So, we're going to very carefully uh, lift this thing up and look at the rear of the tender. I'm trying to be very mindful of the details on this thing because I don't want to pay for anything. Now, there you can see a little bit of the separately applied walkway. This tender hatch here does open. Uh, you can see down inside some of the electronics, but that's really about all it does. You've got a little step right here cast onto the back of the coal bunker. You've got this separately applied and freestanding uh, grab iron here. Better view of the ladders. You've got a couple of stirrup steps here. Poling pockets on the rear corners of the tender a magnetic operating knuckle coupler and the train line, the air line for the air brake system. We will come around and look at the engineer side of the locomotive. Yes, I know it's not sitting correctly on the track. So the tender on the engineer side looks about the same. There's no big difference there. The engineer side of the locomotive is a little bit cleaner with regards to the air compressors there on the fireman side as you saw and you have this cylinder right here for the reverser for the powered reverser for this locomotive and of course more of the same with regards to the freestanding handrail number boards and you can actually see a little line running to the whistle running from the whistle to the cab on the engineer side. Now the interior of the cab is fairly well detailed. I'm, again, I'm not breaking these two apart to show you the cab, just to put the stuff back together. Not happening. Uh, take me at my word or don't take me at my word. But the interior of the cab is very nicely detailed as is the front of the tender where it meets up with the locomotive. One more again for the final flip. And we'll take a look at the front of the locomotive. You can see still a fair amount of detail. You've got the curved handrail right here, grab iron right here. You have these marker lamps. You have the Union Pacific Shield right here, very prominently underneath the headlight, an LED headlight. You've got nice rivet detailing on the smoke box door as well as along the edge of the smoke box itself and of course the the hinges and whatnot right here you've got a separately applied moving but obviously non-functional coupler cut lever on the pilot a little itty bitty little footboard here air hoses operating magnetic knuckle coupler polling pockets you know, this is a gorgeous engine. This is a very, very gorgeous engine. We're going to 
spin it around, put her back on the track, and we will put power to it. We'll run through some of the basic functions of this DCC decoder that this engine has. I'm not going to go into the in-depth review of all the features that this engine has because it's not mine so I'm not going to be held responsible if I accidentally screw up Jim's uh, programmed features that he has in, programmed into this engine. So first thing we'll do we'll put power to the track. Track's hot. Punch in the locomotive's road number because that's what the decoder is programmed to. Loco. And there we go. There's the bell. Function one, function two. Function eight kills the sound. And then of course function zero turns the headlight on and off. There you can see some of the smoke coming out of the stack just sitting there, so we'll Now we'll try reverse. This engine smoke unit is fan driven and synchronized with the sound system, if you couldn't tell. It's kind of light, it's kind of easy on the smoke output, uh, but I mean, I'm not expecting this thing to put out like an old scale MTH. So overall, so far, this is a, an awesome little engine. Uh, we're going to couple it up to this 12 car freight train I've got here in the siding and uh, pull this bad boy around the, uh, the railroad. Get the siding switch line to come out and we'll couple up.